Hello everybody! Today I'm going to be showing off all my crisp wool whistles from my low C to my high D and um, I'm going to give you guys the lowdown about how easy they are to play, how they sound, uh, the finger spacing, etc, etc, etc. I'm going to tell you everything I like about them, some of the things I'm not so keen on and uh, yeah, I'll try and add a link in the description where you guys can contact Chris if you do want to order any whistles from him as well. So I'm going to start with my highest Chris Wall whistle, and this is the Chris Wall High D. It's a plastic whistle, it's um, paint coated in a wood effect, and this one as you can see is in black. The holes are all quite smooth, there's not really much indentation, but there is slightly. There's no resistance, um, so this whistle is quite good for slides. For sound purposes, you can see it's got a cut-in blade at the front here. The essence of all Chris Wall whistles is that you don't need a lot of air to get into the second octave. And what that does is it means that you can play sweet notes in the upper octave without having to force all the air in your body into the whistle. Um, they're a little quieter than other whistles I've played, which makes them great for practice. Probably not so good for session, but I haven't tried, so I can't say. So I'm going to give you a little play of this. I like it. It's, again, easy to get right the way up into the second octave. I was hoping this particular whistle would be better than my Dixon Pro, but I wasn't as keen on this um, because I found the sound a little sharper. Now, for those of you that do play with other instruments, the sharpness of this sound probably is better than other plastic whistles. Um, the Dixon has a little bit more of a mellower, rounded sound, and this was a little bit more sharp and cutting through. So yeah, it might turn out that this is quite a good session whistle. Moving on to my Chris Wall High C. This is a brand new whistle, it came last week. Um, I haven't had much chance to play it, but I can tell you straight away that it's less sticky. In fact, it's not sticky at all. Um, I like the brown finish because it really does look like wood. It's not. It is still plastic, which is incredible. It is a painted wooden finish, um, again, sort of moulded shape, but still a block. Uh, nice cut-out blade across the front there. This one has even less indentation on the holes, and the holes themselves aren't particularly large, um, except for this one, which for me is the middle finger on the bottom hand. That's quite a large hole, but again, nothing difficult to cover at the moment on this whistle. Um, it's a little bit sweeter than the D. You can see the size difference. Um, it's a good inch or so longer on the end there. So I'll play the same tune on this so you guys can hear how this sounds. So you can hear by the sound that this does sound a little bit different to the D whistle. It's a little bit more mellow, it's a little bit more rounded, um, but it's not as loud or forceful. So perhaps uh, not quite as good for playing with other instruments if you're looking for volume, but again a really great practice whistle for the house and I really like playing this. Um, this one actually seems to get into the second octave a little easier. Whistle number three is my Chris Wall Low F. Now this is probably my favourite whistle of all the Chris Wall whistles. Um, I've never really had an in-between size whistle. Um, I've got a G, I suppose, and I've got a B flat. But this one still sounds nice and low. Uh, the finger spacing is really easy to grasp. I do use the Piper's grip, but I could probably get away without it. But I do use the Piper's grip on the bottom part. Um, there's really no need on the top. The holes themselves aren't large. Again, this sort of bottom middle hole is a little bit larger, but it's no problem to cover whatsoever. The mouthpiece for this one is the same sort of style. It's actually really comfortable in the mouth. 
um, because it's a little wider, obviously the bore size is wider as you get lower on the whistles. Um, as an example, you can see here, this is, the low, uh, this is the high C and this is the low F. Again, no real indentation much on the holes. Great for ornaments and things as well, you can slide, yeah. Half holes work well. Um, it sounds amazing, you guys will have heard this a lot on my channel. Um, I'll give you a little scale just so you can hear how it sounds sort of raw, unedited. Really, really easy to play. Now the back pressure difference on these and the higher whistles, it's actually easier to get into the second octave on the lower whistle than it is on the higher whistle, which I find pretty incredible. Um, as far as low whistles go, this requires the least amount of air of every other low whistle I've ever owned or blown. So uh, yeah, that's why I like this so much. So I'm gonna move on to my Criswell low D. Now this low D whistle is a lot longer and, well, than the low F, which you guys can see here, and a lot wider ball size as well. This actually gives it a beautiful, deep, mellow tone, but what is a little bit more difficult about it is there's a little bit more space to have to get your hands around because of the wider ball. Um, so that's a little obstacle that you might need to kind of get over. On top of that as well, I found the spacing on the top left hand for me wider than my other low D whistles. For example, um, if you look at the MK Pro, which I have here, if I line the top finger up, you can see that the Chris Wall whistle is slightly different. So there's, I don't know, maybe half a centimeter, maybe a centimeter difference. I'm gonna go for a centimeter difference. So whereas I don't usually use the Piper's grip on the top hand, I usually only use it on the bottom. For this whistle, I would have to use Piper's grip for both top and bottom, as that isn't quite comfortable enough for me, but um, it sounds amazing. Um, I've only had this whistle maybe a week or so and I haven't really played it as yet. Um, it wasn't one of those whistles that I could immediately pick up and play, so it will take me a little bit of getting used to. Um, what I found interesting on this, I don't know if you guys will see that on camera, but um, there's kind of an indentation on the holes here. So when I try to cover the holes, I don't always get it perfectly and that means air escapes, so I get that kind of cracking sound. Um, so I, I basically just need to get used to where to put my fingers on this whistle and how to get the best sounds out of it whilst covering all the notes. I can't actually get a scale out of this at the moment. I don't know whether that's me or the whistle or what. As I said, it's brand new and I am new to it. So uh, it's probably just a case of me getting used to it. Anyway, I'm gonna move on to the low C. The low C whistle is the largest of all the Chris Wall whistles I own. For size difference, if you see the low D is on top and the low C is on the bottom. Again, a little bit of a colour difference, which I like. Um, the ball size is actually the same on these. Um, the holing is slightly different on this one. It's a little sharper, so rather than having um, a top sort of hole and then an inner hole, this is just kind of a flat hole. Again, the finger spacing on the top of this one seems roughly the same as the D. The bottom is quite a large stretch, but actually not that bad. There's a hole here and this is a particularly large hole, so you will need quite a good coverage of that to get your low notes, but it sounds awesome! <laughs> Sorry, 
about this whistle is just a bigger version of the tiny C. Low C, high C. Amazing. Um, the bigger the whistles get, the less comfortable they are in the mouth, partly because you've got a large uh, surface that you have to put in your mouth, which isn't as comfortable as a smaller surface. For example, if you see um, the difference in sort of mouth size between the F and the C, you'll see that with the C you do have a lot more to fit in. Um, the distance you need to hold it away from your face, like the length of arms isn't too bad on this one. I did have a low B flat whistle once and you needed really long arms to get to the bottom of that, but you don't with this C, which is quite nice. I'll give you a quick scale. is that it doesn't sound entirely in tune when you get to the top end of the second octave or the upper octave. Um, I think that's probably more of a warming up issue. Um, with the bigger whistles, even the plastic ones, I do find that they do need warming up because basically there's more pipe to get your air through. So it might be a case of a bit of extra back pressure or, yeah, as I said, just warming the whistle up. Now, those are all my wood effect crisp wool whistles. I hope you enjoyed the review. If you would like to purchase crisp wool whistles, you can find him on eBay. You will need to message him to let him know what you need. All details are in the description below. Thanks for watching. Until next time, happy whistling. Um, I hope you guys have a great time. Yeah. Don't forget to check me out on Coffee and Patreon if you haven't already. Um, links are in the description as well. And also, don't forget to check out my other videos. Um, I'm going to put up... Farewell to Nig, which I've played throughout this, and I'll also put up um, Fig for a Kiss, which you saw. These were last week's videos, so fairly new. And yeah, see you guys soon. Bye.